Hi and welcome to part 8. We're going to get this character animated now. So we've had him moving around in the last video and now we're going to create the animations and network those across the across the scene. So um, what we need is a couple of things for this um, character. So if we click on the character itself right now um, we need to set up some of the animations. Now I did the animations as a as a whole uh, just one after the other inside of the uh, FBX so there's an idle animation and then there's a run animation and then there's a jump animation we're gonna have to split them up so we'll just quickly get through to that right now um, what we're gonna do is we need three slots to put them in so I'm just gonna click plus until I have three we'll click on the first one and we'll call this one um, idle um, if I can spell i will call this idle and then we'll go down to the options here so idle is gonna loop and idle starts at frame 0 and ends at frame 120 so um, that's frame 0 to 120 is idle um, the next slot we're going to use um, is going to be the run and again that's going to be looped and this time the run goes from frame 150 to frame 162 uh, make sure that that one is looped and the last one that we have is jump uh, and again we just rename that to jump and um, this time we don't loop this one it's just going to play once because um, it's going to have an exit time and that one is frame 184 up to 196 and then we need to make sure that we apply those um, so the each of those animations you should be able to see them right now um, if you click on each of them be able to see the animation and the uh, next step is to bring uh, to create the animator controller that's going to control those and they're going to jump between them um, when I was doing all the testing I did change I initially changed this to uh, humanoid but that caused all sorts of problems as we went further on so make sure that this is still generic don't do not change this to humanoid otherwise the uh, the scripted movement of the bones won't work so um, now that that's done, we're going to uh, create the character uh, animator for it, so the animator controller. So if you click on create, and I'm just going to leave it inside this Lego Man folder, we create an animator controller. And we're going to call this uh, Lego Animator Controller. And um, once that's been made, we just double click it and then we'll be able to add those animations in. So you'll see here that now that we've created these three animations that they do appear um, inside the FBX file. Um, we're going to use the animator controller to be able to jump between them. Uh, a couple, we're going to use um, a couple of parameters as well. So we'll just make the parameters now. So the first parameter we want is we're going to create a boolean for moving. I'm just going to call this moving. Um, and that will be used to trigger whether we're uh, playing the um, run animation or in the idle animation. And a second one will be a trigger, and the trigger is going to be jump. Um, the triggers, weirdly, as I was doing my testing, um, we can the triggers aren't synchronized across the network. It might be better if this was a boolean, um, so it would be a jump, and then it would uh, switch itself off again. But we'll leave it as a trigger because there is a quick shortcut to get that done. So um, we'll drag idle out to create this now. So we'll click idle. It will be our default state. Um, we're going to create uh, the run as well, and the the run animation. We're going to go from idle to run. So I'm going to click right click and make transition. I'm going to choose the little transition here, the, the line that goes between it, and we're going to say that the condition is that moving is true, and we're going to make sure that we don't have an exit time. Um, we're going to say that we'll go back the way from run to idle. Again, that will be the parameter, the condition will be that moving is false, and again, untick has exit time, so it happens immediately. Uh, the next thing is the jump. So I'm going to drag the jump out here, and we're going to we're going to be able to jump from either one of these. Um, so we could create transitions from each of them, or we could just create a transition from any state straight to jump. Um, the issue here is that the jump has to go somewhere once it's finished. So we'll click a tran make transition from jump, and we'll go to run. We'll uh, 
click on the transition and we'll say it has an exit time so when it's finished the jump animation it will go somewhere um, and it will be based on this condition and um, if we are moving then we'll go to run uh, we'll create another transition here and again click on this one so it has the exit time is true and the condition this time is that moving is false so if it's finished the jump animation and it's not moving it'll go to idle if it is moving it'll go to run so that's the entire uh, the entire animator already set up um, with our two parameters and we're going to have to kind of code that to make that work so if we go back to um, we can leave that in the scene view and uh, we'll go back to our prefab so we'll go to first person click on this guy um, so so the character needs um, the animator and that's my fault there's a reason it doesn't have it if you go back to the character import here under rig uh, you need to create an avatar definition so just say create from this model and apply those changes um, what that should do I hope is if we go back to the player um, Lego man should have yeah, the animator Let's revert. okay so yeah we've got the animator it should be there and um, we did have a bit, a bit of trouble with this Let's just see if I can fix that control Z here. So uh, I'll just do that one more time. So go back to the rig. It is generic. It has an avatar, uh, which should be good. If we go back here, you should see the rig. And we'll go back to the, let's go back to here and we look at Lego Man 3 we should have an animator um, I'm just going to add that component for you it should it should work um, mine's just having some issues um, but this one should should work with you uh, if it doesn't just do what I've done um, I've got the the controller that we created we need to attach here so if I just go to that Lego Man folder um, um, I've still got the prefab up here and we go to the Lego animator controller we should be able to drag that on and this avatar was the Lego Man 3 avatar so uh, no root motion for that one so what we should see now is that the animator controller should be working so um, if I just drag this out halfway and make this one my game view we should be able to see the animator controller should be working so um, if I go to LAN host bring the guy closer to the camera you'll see that the idle animation um, should be playing which it is um, and what we need to do is uh, write the code so that we can actually control the other animations and transition from the other animations so we'll just get straight to uh, straight to that So in order to jump around with the animations, um, what we should, uh, what we'll have to do is we'll have to add the animator controller in here to our first person controller script. So I'm going to make it public so we can find it. So we'll make a public animator, animator, and we'll call this uh, animator with a small a. Uh, and then if we just quickly jump back to our um, prefab for the player so if we go to um, assets um, player you should see now that inside of our script the first person controller script we also have the, the animator now the animator we should see is attached to Lego Man 3 so We'll click on Lego, drag that into Lego Man 3, and we should be good to go um, with that one. So if I go back to the code, what we're needing to do is uh, is fairly simple. Now we have access to this animator, and you remember before that the animator had a few uh, parameters. Um, all we need to do is set these correctly. So we'll 
go straight to uh, this first person controller code and we'll look at the uh, probably the move function to be honest so um, this inside the move function when we get the input here if we if this is above a certain value we're moving if it's um, below a certain value we're not so um, we could uh, quickly write the animator controller uh, to do that so um, there's a couple of ways of doing this I'm going to show you um, show you a quick way uh, so we're going to basically say the uh, let's do the long way first so we do if uh, so if the input dot magnitude is uh, greater than say 0 0.1 then we want to set the animator dot um, set bool so we set the bool of moving small m to be um, true um, otherwise we'll set the animator dot set pool of moving will be false now this is perfectly fine to be able to do this um, this is exactly what we're after but what we can do is um, C sharp has got uh, something a little bit nicer than this where we can do the question mark uh, so I'll show you what I mean so we can basically just say in one line exactly what we've done in these six lines so we'll say animator dot set bool and we'll choose moving and then what we're going to do is we're basically going to now do the condition so this is this is remember this is replacing these lines up here so we're just going to say input dot magnitude is greater than 0 0.1 so it seems really weird that we're doing um, a comparison here but what we're going to do is if we put the question mark after it we can say um, true false so what this will do I will explain is that it will evaluate this part of the code if it's if it's true if it happens to be true it will set this to the, the it'll evaluate to the value of true and uh, if it's not it'll evaluate to the value of false so um, you can even if you wanted to get entirely get rid of this um, it makes it maybe slightly clearer if we've got this if you look at that up on, in Google the uh, question mark in C sharp um, or we can if we get rid of these it will evaluate to true or it'll evaluate to false so uh, this makes things a heck of a lot simpler to be able to do it like this. Um, that way we can entirely get rid of all of these. So that looks a lot neater. And I'll just put in evaluate the moving parameter in animator. Animator. So uh, the this will this will basically set it to true or false. Um, depending on whether it's greater than or less than. The next thing we want to do is set the jump um, and we'll do that down in here where we've actually jumped. So um, if we're going to do this um, locally uh, we need to do this with the animator again and we're just going to say set trigger and we're going to we call this trigger jump. Um, that will set this locally but what we have to also do is, um, and I found this out through testing because it didn't work, but what we also have to do is we, we have to set this as the network animator as well. So this script is on this object and we also um, will add the network animator onto it um, as well. Uh, so I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to type in network animator um, and add that in you'll see the network animator needs to know the animator and so um, from the prefab if I open up the prefab the network animator needs to know the animator so it's just simply on Lego Man 3 we can drag that on so we now know the, the animator and we do want to click client authority just like we did with network transform um, so what we're gonna do is this uh, this script here, first person controller, needs to get the network animator because we're going to use um, 
the network animator set trigger function. So um, what we'll do is we'll just say get component uh, network animator and then we'll say set trigger and the name of the trigger was jump. So this will also set it across all clients as well so the clients will see the jump happening as well. So uh, yeah I'm pretty sure we've managed to get that part and the last thing I think we need to do make sure everything is saved and running um, I really should test this um, or you should test this to make sure it's working so far the last thing I need to add to this prefab is the network transform child um, the reason for that is because the network transform child we have to actually transform this spine 002 as well so um, we will need to make sure that that's networked across uh, to all clients as well so network transform child gets added to the prefab and we'll take spine 002 which is the one we're moving when we move the mouse up and down um, we'll take that and put it on as the target right here and again we want to have client authority so I'm gonna pause the video and build it and test to make sure it works and then we'll fix any problems so um, you can see that uh, we managed to get pretty much the whole thing working so um, the player moves around, he's animated um, he's animated across the network uh, I did notice that the jump didn't work but because um, you guys are all geniuses you probably um, would have noticed that um, this guy's both of them are animated across the network uh, you would have noticed that it was a mistake um, not with the network code but with the uh, with the animator so um, we're just going to quickly fix that so click on this one close that and uh, close here so the animator if you um, go back to the lego man we created a lego animator um, the issue i had was that this animator um, Hang on, close, move that one across so this will get a bit more space. Go to the animator. So the issue here is that we had the any state um, going to jump, but I forgot to set the trigger. Uh, so this uh, this transition needs to have the condition um, over here. Uh, that condition needs to be set to jump, and then when you test this and run this, uh, it should be sweet. Uh, right, I'm quickly going to just prove that to you by testing and building and this will be the end of the video so as you can see um, we have managed to uh, have a network game here where we've got the player animated um, this bit was quite tough, it took me uh, a few hours to work out how to get the, um, the synchronization across the, the pitch as, as it's part of an animation rather than um, rather than doing it just as a normal camera but uh, yeah that's that, we've pretty much managed to get this character on and hopefully you've learned a fair amount about how to do this as you go. Um, we, I'll probably continue the series uh, uh, in a few more days but it'll be a few days before I update um, with any more. Um, please put some comments in um, and subscribe if you feel if you haven't done so already um, and just uh, give me some ideas about what we want to see next. I think um, for I think getting the customized um, customized UI would probably be the next step and uh, just working on the um, a, a lobby scene uh, or a start scene, an offline scene before going into the online scene would probably be good but there's a lot of uh, a lot of co content we've covered and um, you know if you want to change these things out hopefully you've learned how you can do them alright thanks for watching and see you later